All righty. Uh, we are going to pick up where we left off. This is uh, part two of our um, motor-driven roller project. So we, we created our layout sketch. We've got the spacing of our rollers uh, calculated um, using our center distance designer here. And um, now we're going to kind of flesh out some of the parts a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to create <clears throat> a new sketch on the right plane just so we're not editing our, our layout. And then we're going to uh, model our side plate. Now, we're just going to make the side plate out of a quarter-inch polycarbonate. <clears throat> and then um, everything will be kind of mounted to that. So um, what we're going to do is, as I mentioned, this, this roller here is going to be dead axle. So there's going to be basically a round aluminum tube with a, with a tube nut in the end of it that gets bolted to the side plate. And then this roller up here is going to be live axle, meaning there's going to be a bearing in the side plate. Um, and then the motor will just be mounted with a kind of a little standoff block that we'll talk about uh, later. So um, what we're going to do to start is I believe we are going to use a three-quarter inch aluminum tube. We may use five-eighths. It kind of depends on the design of the, um, the, the pulley end caps. So we'll get to that a little bit later. Right now, I'm going to assume it's a three-quarter inch um, tube. And this is just going to be oops, construction. And then um, so we just need a basically a flat surface for this to bolt onto. Now, I could just make the plate be this exact diameter. There's no real reason the plate needs to be bigger than that for the dead axle. That being said, we're actually going to use the side plate as kind of a, a, a left to right bearing surface for the roller. Um, this is the same arrangement that the RoboChargers ran on our 2022 robot. It worked really well. It saves a lot of weight and complexity, not adding in a, a thrust bearing or anything like that. Um, you know, uh, some teams use use um, uh, external retaining rings as well. We, we even found that that wasn't even necessary. Literally just the the roller rubbing on the polycarb was, was an acceptable interface as long as you didn't as long as there was a little bit of room for the roller to float. So we're going to just design this that way. We're going to design this the, the same way. Um, and, um, you know, just to kind of keep this project simple. So I'm going to leave a little bit of an extra pl extra plastic around the edge, um, you know, all the way around here um, for this, um, you know, as a, as a bearing surface, basically, to keep the roller constrained left to right. Now, what, um, what we should um, kind of, take into consideration here is that this polycarb roller is bigger than the plastic. And so if this if this was an intake mechanism, that is actually pretty important that the roller stick out from the plastic so that you kind of have some ability to pick up a game piece, you know, through the side of the intake, as well as, you know, just in the front like you normally would. Um, and then in addition, we're going to have a hole up here that is going to be 1.125 for a, just a standard uh, you know, uh, rounded hex bearing, and then um, you know the there's going to be need to be some material on the outside of this. Um, in addition to that, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to just have the plate hug the profile of the motor. We're not I'm not going to have anything stick out this back side really. Um, I don't think kind of tempted to do it now. No, nah, it's fine. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a bearing hole here. Um, this is not necessary, strictly speaking. Um, however, it is helpful to have a hole. Uh, we're, there's not going to be a bearing here. The motor shaft will just be cantilevered, but it is kind of helpful to have a hole in the plate so that if you need to slide the, the pulley on and off the motor shaft, you have the ability to do that. Um, so I'm going to just going to go ahead and put this hole here. Um, down here, I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, a 0.257 inch hole. This will be for the screw um, that holds the tube in, and we'll go more into that later. Normally, you know, you'd use a hole feature to put this hole in, but it's such an important feature that I'm just going to put it in the sketch. Okay, and then in addition, um, generally speaking, you want as little material as you can below the, the rollers. However, um, you know, uh, you know, you have to have some there just to keep it well supported, especially on an intake where you take a lot of impacts and things. You want to be careful about how thin the material gets around things like bearing holes because, you know, that creates a very thin area and that's where you crack parts if they get hit or something. So um, we're going to go ahead and I'm actually just going to do a construction circle here 
and um, we're just going to attach lines like this, and then we're going to add a bunch of uh, tangent constraints. So they're there, and then I'm gonna tangent this to that, and this to that. That'll make a little more sense why here in a second. And then this, this circle basically just represents the minimum material that we want around this bearing hole. So if we do like two inches, you know, this line here is tangent to the circle. Right? If this line continued out, it would be tangent. And then if this line continued out, it'd be tangent. So that's just a kind of a simple way to just guarantee that we have enough material, you know, between here and here. Um, and then we'll we'll add fillets and stuff to make this a rounded corner later because you definitely don't want sharp internal edges like this. Um, then on the outside, um, what we're going to do is we're actually going to add some big long standoffs here that kind of support the two sides of the intake. Um, how many standoffs you need kind of depends on, you know, the size and the shape of the intake mechanism. So we're going to just kind of throw a couple of them in and not worry too much about um, you know exactly how many we need um, however um, one thing to keep in mind is that the dead axle on the front of this roller it does act as a standoff itself so the more dead axles you have the more extra or the less extra standoffs you will need um, so i'm going to just go ahead and kind of do this the same way we did the bottom and just you know attach some tangent lines to these these circles um, if you had more specific requirements for your intake um, you know, you might need to do some other geometry here. However, what we're doing is, you know, pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to kind of make this um, just kind of this smooth arc shape a little bit. Um, and then we need to, I could just turn this, turn construction off on this guy, I guess. Um, but I'm actually just going to add an arc. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. This adds extra geometry, but it keeps... Uh, the number of like regions to a minimum okay so then um we don't need a standoff out here towards the end because we've got the dead axle we do need standoffs close to this roller especially since this is where the bearing is so a little bit of axial constraint is helpful and then i do actually think that um, having one closer to the motor would be nice so what we're gonna do these will be um probably uh three-eighths round standoffs and I'm going to make these construction and then I am actually going to go ahead and oops uh, add add the holes for these in the sketch just because um, I'm doing equal and actually I should delete this to delete this dimension and make these equal as well should have done that the first time and then this should be 0.196 hole for a 1032 screw then I'm going to make this, um, I don't want this right on the edge just because that puts the hole pretty close to the edge and that I don't want this to crack. So I'm just going to do a dimension and make this 0.25 and going to do the same here. And then actually I should go ahead and I forgot that I wanted to do a third one. So this one will be construction. Come on equal in size to that and then this one will be equal in size to that okay and then dimension from here to oops from here to there quarter inch looks okay for all these we'll just keep them all the same um, and then i'm going to do i could just make this tangent to this circle i think that might be reasonable so Generally, you got to be a little prepared because like the rollers, we modeled these as 1.25 inches, but in reality, or so that, that's the size of the polycarb tubing, but in reality, you typically put some rubber or something on the outside of these, so the rollers are slightly larger, and I don't want these standoffs so close to this roller that, you know, they interfere at all. So I think what we'll do is we'll just do a dimension from here to the center, and, you know, so these end up being like 1.5 or something, actually... I take it back. I'm not going to do to the center. I'm going to do from here to the center like that. So the roller ends up being like 1.4 to 1.5 OD normally. And then we probably want like, I don't know, a quarter inch of clearance. So like, you know, um, you know, 0.75 on the radius you know, is the radius of this with the rubber, you know, plus a quarter inch. We'll just make this one inch. 
which ends up actually just being on this circle because it's two inches. So yeah, I guess I was right. I can I could have just done that. That being said, it's nice to have um, these defined separately. So like if I decided that this area here was too thin and I was worried about this cracking, I could take this and go, oh, I want a little more, 2.25, right? And you know the standoffs still stay one inch away. Basically, I can control those two things separately. So um, it's still important to not constrain things to geometry that isn't actually related. Like the circle has nothing to do with where these these um, holes need to be. So um, we'll just keep it like this. And then this guy here just needs to be, there needs to be some gap between it and the motor, really. I'll just do like an eighth of an inch. It's fine. Okay, that looks good to me. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna extrude this out. Um, I'm gonna go the other way, actually. All the way from the origin, I think. And then go 0.25. Mm, no, I take it back. Uh, so then this is quarter inch polycarb, but the thing to understand is that quarter inch polycarb is not actually a quarter of an inch. It's basically 0.22 very consistently. So um, when you're designing with polycarbonate, um, when you're designing with like aluminum, the the obviously there's some tolerance, there's some manufacturing tolerance to the sheets and stuff that you get. However, it's typically okay to design to whatever the fractional size is. You know, if it's quarter inch aluminum, you know, quarter inch aluminum plate, you know, usually comes in like 10 thou, eight to 10 thou oversize, but you know, that's, it's still okay to design as if, as if it's quarter inch and those tolerances just get kind of taken up in the, the, the assembly process. Um, that being said on an FRC robot, the difference between, you know, a quarter of an inch on the polycarb and then the polycarb's real dimension is typically big enough that it will actually cause you some issues. So it's important to actually model polycarb to this correct dimension. Um, otherwise you'll, you'll, you'll definitely run into some problems later on. So, um, okay, so that's that. And then um, that gives us a pretty straightforward shape. And then we need to add some mounting holes for the motor. Um, and there's gonna be kind of this little like standoff thing that we make. Um, and I'll kind of explain more how that's gonna work, but for now, I'm just gonna put a, a whole pattern here. So I'm gonna create a sketch and then um, I'm just gonna do, this is the way I normally do these just to make it very obvious what the whole pattern is. Um, there's other ways to do this. This is just the way that I like to do it. It adds a lot of geometry, but it, it helps um, you tell what's going on visually. So if you have a different way that you like to do this, that's totally fine. So I just draw a square with an equal constraint on, you know, attached to a, a circle. And then this basically the circle represents the bolt circle. And then, then I put a polygon inside to tell how many holes there are. So like if this was a, a six hole pattern, I'd put a hexagon. If it was an eight hole pattern, I'd put an octagon, right? Whatever. Um, a square is easy because it's, you know, it allows me to just um, uh, create it, you know, kind of aligned to the origin or, or whatever I want. So anyways, um, that's the reason why I do this this way. And then whole pattern or whole feature, simple through clearance, number 10, close, and then the four sketch points. Um, it is possible that we will need to change the orientation of this whole pattern later, but I'm pretty sure this orientation will be okay. All right, so then let's, um, let's, I don't remember what part numbering system we were using before, but we'll just do week 10, uh, P001. And then I'm gonna rename this to components. And then, um, I don't know why it's saying I have reduced rendering performance, but I'm pretty sure it's okay. Okay, so then uh, what we're gonna do is assign the material. There's polycarbonate, that's what we're gonna do. And then um, for appearance, um, now polycarbonate's obviously transparent. However, working with transparent parts, as I mentioned in our gearbox project is a little bit annoying. So I always just use this kind of off-white color just so that this color is just, I pick this color because it tells me that this is a plastic part and I just remember that it's polycarbonate when I'm seeing it. So that's that's helpful to me, but you can kind of pick anything you want. And then once I'm done, I'll go back and and change the color to be something you know transparent that actually matches 
um, the actual you know appearance of the actual polycarbonate. All right, so then at this point, um, we can go ahead and model our dead axle. Um, as I mentioned, I'm not sure 100% what the diameter is going to be exactly, but we can go back and change it. So I'm actually going to show the layout again. Oh, no, it wasn't the layout. It was this sketch. I'm going to let this circle here drive the diameter. So we're going to project that. Turn off construction. I'm going to put another circle on the inside to represent the inner diameter. And the wall thickness is going to be 16th. Um, and then we're going to extrude this out. Now we don't actually know. Um, we need to do a new part for this. And we don't actually know what the width is going to be. So we can just kind of define it. We'll do something narrow just so it fits on our screen. Normally an intake would be you know, 20 to 30 inches wide. Um, we're going to do something a little narrower just to make this whole thing fit on our screen a little bit better so it's easier to see what's going on. So I'll just go 12 inches wide on that. And then um, shut off our sketch. And then typically what I just do is I rename a part that already has a part number, hit Control C on my keyboard, Control V to paste, and then just change the number. And this material is going to be aluminum 6061. And then the appearance should be this light gray. Okay, so that gives us a pretty good start here. Um, and then um, now what we need to do is essentially um, position position some, some belts and some pulleys um, here. So... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a feature script. Um, so I need to make sure this feature script is installed. It is. It's this FRC belt calculator here down at the bottom. So we're going to use this guy. And this, this guy is going to do two things. So first of all, um, it, is, it is a belt calculator itself, just like the center distance designer calculator is. Um, so it's going to validate. it's going to validate that the calculations we did here are correct. Um, validate that our center to center distances are correct. And then in addition to that, it's going to put in some models of, of the actual belt drive components um, for us to work with. So it, if you just want belts, you can have it just put in belts for you. Um, but in our case, because we actually need to design a custom pulley, um, the calculator will go ahead and put in some pulley models for us. And then we will, we will kind of modify those models a little bit to make our custom parts. So. Um, Basically, what we need to do here is um, we need to give it. Um, we can kind of just open this up here real quick. We need to give it basically some some locations to put pulleys, some some mate connectors, basically, or some geometry. So what we're actually going to do um, is we're going to create a plane that's offset from this surface here. I don't know exactly how far it needs to be offset, so we'll adjust that here in a second. I'm just going to leave it as the default one inch, and then um, we're going to create a sketch on this plane. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just hide the plane. I'm gonna show the layout. Come on, show the layout sketch. And I'm just going to project these circles from the layout sketch, and then click OK. All right. So then hide the layout sketch again, and then we're going to do our belt calculator. Um, we'll do the uh, we'll do the motor one. No, we'll do this one first. Okay, so pulley one position. Oh, no. Yeah, so if you select this, um, you can select the circle and then select the second circle. And then there's there's this kind of this offset location which um, lets you lets you position the belt. Although that doesn't work in our case i guess um okay so then uh it it should select um the belt automatically so so what we can do here is um we have a few different options so we can pick which belt pitch we want it defaults to nine millimeter wide gt2 which happens to be what we're using but if we're using htd uh, which is a uh, five millimeter pitch you can also select those um they have built into this calculator there's a um a list basically of the belts that different suppliers use. So if you have this auto choose belt selected, 
you can pick the closest belt. You know, it'll pick up or down. You can pick the next largest or the next smallest. It essentially goes through the same process that we did here manually. Um, and then what you can do is um, you can have it pick from the Vexpro belts or the Rev belts. Um, these are the two suppliers in FRC that, that have the best selection of belts. So those are the two that are built into this belt calculator, but obviously you can get belts elsewhere if you want. Um, you could also just have it use any belt size. Um, the thing to understand, if you do any belt size, um, you gotta be careful because you won't necessarily be able to buy that belt anywhere. So um, that's something to keep in mind as well. So then uh, what you can see here, down here, uh, it, it names the part, it creates a part that is the belt and it names it based on how many teeth it is. So when you auto choose belt, it just picks the one, ever, the, whichever one's closest. Now this 90 tooth belt happens to be the one that we picked. Um, it's from Vex Pro, but if we go to Rev, um, you know, Rev doesn't sell a 90 tooth belt. So you'll see that it pops up this little message that says um, the closest belt is not basically compatible with the geometry that we selected. So that's just something to, uh, to, to keep in mind, like when you're using this is that it will tell you if your center to center distance is wrong. And if it doesn't tell you anything, that means your center to center distance is good. So that's kind of the way that you use this to validate your, your math. Um, in addition, you can also just use this feature to calculate your center to center distances. Um, personally, I like to kind of build that geometry into my layout sketch a little earlier in the process. And so I don't really use this belt calculator that way. However, it's totally valid if you want to do it that way. And it, obviously that is the intention behind this feature is that it can be used that way. Um, so uh, I'm going to switch back to VEX Pro because that's the one that we're actually using. And then we'll use the Rev one for this. Uh, obviously VEX Pro has an 85 as well. So you could select either in that case. Um, all right. So then pulleys, we actually do want to have it create pulleys. So um, uh, this happens to default to 24 teeth, but if you're on this belt page, um, you got to be a little careful. I, I actually kind of wish these tabs were reversed or the pulleys were in between belt because you kind of want to go left to right here, but it, the order that you want to actually kind of go with these in is position, then pulleys, then belt, because you need to change the number of teeth um, on these pulleys um, in order to get the calculation to work correctly. So um, if it's not auto choosing belt correctly, make sure you go over here to pulleys and select uh, the pulley sizes. Now in our case, um, the default is correct. 24 is, is what we want. Um, so we're going to just leave it alone, but um, that, that's something to be in mind uh, to keep in mind. Um, okay. So then uh, for pulleys, because we want it to actually generate pulleys for us, we're going to select custom pulley and then it generates, it creates kind of a ghost of a pulley here. And there's basically just a bunch of settings that we can change. Um, so let's uh, let's figure out what we want to do here. Um, also, now that I'm looking at this, we're definitely going to have to go for a smaller smaller tube. We could also go for a bigger belt. Yeah, actually, I based this design off of the RoboCharger's um, belt rollers last year and now I'm kind of wondering if I if I'm misremembering the tooth count because um, you know these sizes are not actually looking the same as what I remember them being so um, we might play with some other some other pulley sizes so anyways um, let's keep messing with this here real quick before we move on to that so um, obviously you've got the number of teeth um, the pulley width is this area in the middle. It doesn't include the flanges, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I want this to be a metric number. Typically, I go one millimeter above the belt width. So the belt width is nine millimeters, so I'll do 10 millimeters. Um, the bore type is, it, you can't see it because the tube's in the way, but there's a hex bore in here. Um, we just want no, no, uh, no bore because we'll put our own uh, bore in. And then... Um, we do want the flanges and we want the flange width to probably be something that we define. And I'm also going to go for metric dimension here. I'm going to go 1.5 millimeters, which is very close to a 16th. Okay. And then for pulley two, we're going to do custom pulley and we're going to go, let's see, 10 millimeters here as well. No bore, basically all the same settings, 1.5 millimeters. OK. 
Okay, and you can see there's no bore in the middle of this. And we'll, we'll go ahead and put the bore in manually. Although this one actually could be hex. Yeah, okay. All right, so then I want to play around with, with this pulley size because pulley size is very small. You can see this is the diameter of our roller, basically. Um, and then this is, the di this is the diameter of the pulley. So I kind of want to play around with some other pulley diameters here. Um, so let's, uh, let's look at 30 teeth and see what that looks like. Um, and obviously we're getting this error because our our, uh, our uh, belt size is wrong now. So we'll, we'll fix that. So a 30 teeth looks a lot better. So I think we're going to do that. Um, and then we need to go back and select uh, a different belt size. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to just accept this. It's it's giving us an error, but that that's okay. Um, and then what we're going to do is go back to our layout sketch and we're going to change these dimensions a little bit. So um, for the center distance here, we're going to go back and do a 16 tooth pulley here and a 30 tooth pulley here. So 90, 90 tooth belt looks pretty close. I think let's go ahead and stick with 85 though, because like I like I mentioned earlier, there's really no reason why this motor can't be closer to this roller for what we're doing. So um, we're gonna go ahead and go with that number, adjust that there. Um, and then uh, then we're gonna do basically the same thing for 30 and 30. Now in this case, it wants to we want to use a bigger belt because we definitely don't want this center to center distance to be significantly shorter. So it looks like if we go to a hundred tooth belt, uh, which I believe Vex sells, let's check. Hundred tooth. Let's see what Rev has. Our Rev has 105 is the closest size. Um, these these belts are getting organized a little different on the website, so it'll be a little easier to see which belts are available um, here, not before too long, but um, at the moment, you kind of just got to look over the individual product pages and see what's available. There's not a huge selection, so it doesn't take that long. Um, okay, so we'll go with a 100, 100 tooth belt, which will be 105 millimeter center to center distance. And like I mentioned, um, you know, if you're doing one to one, you end up with an exact nice round metric number as your spacing that you could just type into your CAD. Um, okay, so then you'll notice uh, we're not getting a an error here anymore. Um, we can edit this and kind of look, make sure it's selected the right belts. Got 100 tooth and we still have 30, so we're all good to go. Um, now, obviously, these are kind of just floating out in space, and um, you know we kind of want we kind of want this to be positioned a little bit better uh, up closer to the plate, and so that's why we have this plane. So the plane that we created is right in the middle. You can see the you can see the sketch is still here. The sketch is right in the middle of this belt path. So we can kind of put that plane where we want to get the correct, um, uh, basically the correct uh, um, uh, position for the the belt path. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go back and edit this plane. Now I'm just going to type in some numbers manually to figure out the spacing. So let's um, let's talk about this here. So this is a nine millimeter belt and we made this area here 10 millimeters wide. You can see that here, this is 10 millimeters. Um, and then this flange here is a millimeter and a half. So from the center line, we have five millimeters is half of 10 and then we've got one and a half here. So we have six and a half millimeters from the center line of this belt to this side of the pulley. Now we're gonna ignore the dead axle down here for a second and we're gonna look at this one. So up here, we're gonna have a bearing in this hole and that bearing is going to have a flange and that flange is the 16th of an inch thick. And then in addition to that, we are gonna want some sort of a little spacer between uh, this pulley and the bearing itself so that the, the pulley is not rubbing on the outer race of the bearing. So we've got a 16th for the pulley flange, and I would say we want another 16th for that little spacer as well. And so that means we're gonna have an eighth of an inch gap between here 
and here. And so we have an eighth of an inch there, and then we've got uh, six and a half millimeters from here to the center line of the belt. And so that total, whatever the total of that number is, is the spacing that we want this, this uh, plane spaced off from this uh, uh, plate. So if we go in here and we edit this, we're going to type in an eighth of an inch, which is 0.125 inches plus 6.5 millimeters. It's going to be some very strange number because it's a combination of inches and metric, um, but that's okay. And so then if we do a little measurement between here and here, you can see that it's an eighth of an inch and, and that all worked correctly. So um, that's the position that we want for those belts most likely. All right, so then um, the next thing we need to do is we need to just throw in a... Uh, a belt for the motor. Now, in reality, we're actually going to have to move this belt around. It's not going to get um, constrained in the right spot. Um, through our feature, we're going to have to um, constrain it in the assembly, but we're going to kind of just throw it in here so it's in this part studio. So we're going to go back to our belt calculator, and um, we need to show the sketch again, and then we need to do pulleys. We're going to do no pulley for both of these because we don't need... Um, custom pulleys. This pulley will be the same on both sides of the roller. So, so whatever we do to this pulley here will be the same on both sides. Um, I'll explain what that arrangement is going to be once we get into the assembly process a little bit more. Um, so we don't need this pulley a second time. And then um, we don't need the motor pulley, obviously, because that's a, that's a COTS part. So um, no pulleys in either place. Um, we do need um, pulley one will be the 16 tooth one and pulley two will be the 30 tooth. And then the belt will let it auto choose from rev belts. And then the pulley one position is going to be this guy. Come on. There we go. Oops. And then this pulley two is going to be this, the sketch circle. There we go. Okay. And you can see. Uh, no errors. It's saying our center to center distance is correct. So uh, we can click OK. So then obviously this doesn't work, right? We can't have this belt and this belt on the same pulley. So what we're actually going to do is um, there's going to be another one of these plates over here on this side. And then the motor is actually going to be over here with this belt here. The, the motor and this belt will be over here on this side. And there'll be a pulley on this side of this middle roller. And then uh, this belt here will be on this side where it's shown um, on screen. So basically you can kind of jog back and forth left and right on your belts to drive multiple rollers kind of in a chain. Um, the alternative would be you could also just make these pulleys twice as wide and run the belts side by side on the same pulley. Um, that's also relatively common. That being said, I generally like to try to balance um, the belt spacing um, a little bit more evenly on the left and right side of the mechanism. That just allows you, when you've got a roller with that's got some grippy rubber on it, it allows you to get that grippy rubber as close to the edge of the intake as possible. And so instead of like, you lose like two inches on this side and you don't lose anything on this side, um, that that is a, a little more unbalanced than I would typically like an intake mechanism to be. But depending on what you're doing, that might be okay. So um, what we're going to do is go and hide this and... Um, now we basically just need to take these pulleys and turn these into um, an acceptable kind of custom part. So I do want to talk about this a little bit. So let's um, let's hide the two belts and let's hide this part. Um, so these pulleys here are kind of an approximation of the GT2 tooth profile. They're not necessarily exact. However, um, they're pretty close. And when you're doing 3D printed pulleys, um, you're typically not going to get the exact tooth geometry anyways. So um, a, a close approximation is fine. Now, in reality, um, I have never actually 3D printed pulleys using this belt calculator. So I, I don't know how well this tooth profile actually works when you 3D print it. Um, for the purposes of our CAD class, we're going to just use this and assume this is okay. However, for the RoboChargers, I actually have a GT2 pulley 
generator um, that we would just copy and paste um, a new tab into the document and just use that way. Um, every pulley that we had on our robot in the 2022 season was designed using that generator that I set up. And so um, going forward, we will probably still use that generator um, unless we take the time to validate <clears throat> basically this feature script. So um, we're going to just move forward with this feature script right now, but just understand that um, for RoboChargers specifically, um, this workflow may look a little bit different um, using our, our uh, uh, pulley generator. So um, let's, let's kind of move forward here. So um, we, we know that we wanted a, a bearing boss on this side, basically to just keep the pulley from rubbing on the, uh, the, um, the outer race of the bearing. So we're gonna go ahead and create a sketch here. I do wanna verify what this measurement actually is. So it's, it's modeled to be exactly half an inch. Um, that might be okay. If you, if you found that when you 3D, we would normally uh, use a MarkForge to print these. And so on a MarkForge, typically printing exactly half an inch is okay. Um, it might be a little on the tight side, but that's, that's probably not necessarily a bad thing. Um, however, um, if you find if you found that it was too tight, what you would have to do is edit your belt calculator, turn off the bore, basically do no bore like like this guy over here, and then do an extrusion to cut that hex out. You, you could alternatively leave this hex in and, and do an extrude over top of it, but um, I don't see a reason to have this hex already generating in the background. Um, so uh, it's kind of up to whoever's designing. So um, let's go ahead and um, actually, I don't rem remember really if how on shape handles this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a circle. Three quarters of an inch is usually what I use for bearing bosses. And then we're gonna just do an extrude. And then I just wanna select this outer region. Yeah. And then we're gonna do um, offs, uh, we're gonna do front up to, face we're going to select this face and then we're going to do offset distance of a 16th i know that we already factored that into our spacing of the plane so i know that we could have just extruded this bearing boss out a 16th because that's what we wanted however doing this offset distance thing just guarantees that this bearing boss exists the way we want um you know even when we uh, were to like rebuild this and and change the the, the plane spacing or something um we know that this spacing will still be correct okay so that's fine just like that um sometimes you can add a chamfer here too if you want but it's up to you um this is the way that we did them last year so i think i'm just going to keep it that way um and then in addition we need to add um basically a protrusion on this side that gets pressed into the polycarbonate roller so um let's uh pull up mcmaster as things are starting to get a little cluttered here but I'm gonna leave these tabs open for now. Um, so we're gonna search polycarbonate tubing and then inch sizes, we want the OD to be one and a quarter. Yeah, and you buy them in these sticks. I think we just bought eight foot pieces and we just cut them to length ourselves. This is eighth wall though. I don't think we used eighth wall. I think we used this stuff. <clears throat> okay, so all thickness. Okay, so it is 16th wall, and it's, uh, I'm just looking at the tolerances here for the ID. It's one and an eighth, um, but it can be oversized by as much as 15 thou which would be, if I can do this head math correctly, 1.14, I believe that's correct. Yeah, 1.14. Um, so that's kind of a lot. So what we did last year on the RoboChargers is we we didn't really try so hard to make these a press fit, but we, um, we just we were okay with a, a press fit if we got one or, or a slip fit was fine and then what we did was we 
we drilled a hole after the fact and put a screw in the side with a with some um you know either either tapping the plastic and just putting a screw in with low torque or using a plas uh, a plastic um uh, a plastic like self tapping screw um, or thread forming screw would work as well um and so we were not relying on the press fit for torque transfer and we were also not relying on the press fit for axial constraining of the tube on the end cap so i'm going to just go ahead and model this uh as being just the nominal one and an eighth and then we'll just when we print this a, a, a first of all the tubes end up being closer to that tolerance in my experience anyways and then um if we end up with a super loose one or one that's super tight that's okay because we're not actually relying on that fit for um transferring torque and constraining all the parts so um, I'm going to create a sketch here then. And then also because, you know, this is a 3D printed part, um, you know, they're not necessarily the strongest things. So you also want, um, you also want a decent amount of length here. So um, we're going to do that. And then we're going to extrude this out. I'm going to deselect the faces and select only this region. So I think like, you know, one inch or maybe, maybe three quarter would be better um is pretty good and then what we would usually do is we put a pretty aggressive chamfer on this oops here like that and do like you know, eighth inch or something put a pretty pretty aggressive chamfer there um and then this little lip i don't actually know how big this is minimum distance twenty-five thou. that's very very small um i think i think we want that to be bigger i think so that's probably okay so if you want this to uh we're gonna go ahead and make this bigger because I'm, I'm not super comfortable with this little amount of material being the only thing constraining this axially especially since this is such a thin area here and it's 3d printed so this feature might not get super great like fidelity so what we're gonna do is um this is gonna be a bit tricky so i need to probably turn on the sketch that defines this come on there we go and then I need to define a plane and I'm just gonna do, I think I'm just gonna do a revolve so I can control the geometry, but that means I need to create a plane here. So plane, uh, plane point, select the center point of the circle and then we just need a plane to be parallel to, which will just be the front plane. Okay, and that, that creates a plane that cuts through this part. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to hide this plane and then create a sketch on it. And then I can hide this. And we're gonna to need to do the same thing for this pulley down here most likely. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I can do, if I select the plane, oops, if I select the, come on, maybe not. Uh, okay, so if I do intersection and then I select this face and this face and this face, it gives me these lines to work with. And I think I'm gonna just go ahead and select that face as well. So this basically just gives me a cut profile uh, on the sketch plane I'm on. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically make the same shape, um, but I'm gonna just change the dimension. So this and this, I'm gonna select those and make those, oops, I did not mean to do that. I'm gonna select both of these and make them coincident to each other so they're, they're in line. Um, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this uh, a sixteenth of an inch because that's the wall thickness of the polycarbonate tube. And so this this air this will be like flush with the top of the polycarb tube. And then I'm going to just make this dimension here, you know, just something I'm comfortable with. That's bigger than it needs to be. Maybe I'll go to a thirty second of an inch, which is 0.03125. Um, I just, I think I mentioned this in a previous, uh, CAD class session, but I have all of these fraction to decimal memorized. Um, 
just years of doing CAD, you just kind of pick them up and you know what they are. Um, there's kind of a pattern to them, so they're they're relatively easy to remember. But um, you know, uh, it's still uh, you know, it takes time. But um, at, you know, it's a good idea whenever you are designing in CAD if you have some fractional dimension. You can of course type it in here. I could type 132, um, and I, I get the same thing, right? But it's typically a good idea. Just pay attention to what the decimal is. So when you when you do a 30 second, look at what you know what the actual decimal is. And if you just do that every time you're working in CAD, it doesn't take you very long to memorize all these. Um, and so basically, um, I think a 30 second there is okay. We've still got a little bit of a flat here, which is good for the 3D print. Um, and then all we have to do now is we just need a center line. So I'm gonna click OK. And then I think I can use uh, this face here. And then I think I can just use this as the revolve axis. Ah, yes, I can. OK, and it's doing add. And it's adding to this custom pulley. That's the merge scope. So we should be good. OK, that looks a lot better. Now, the only thing to understand here is that we then made this shorter. So this is not 3 quarters of an inch anymore. It's you know 1 32nd less. Um, so whatever that is, 23 30 seconds. So if we really want this to be three quarters of an inch, we can go in and change our extrusion, which I think I'll just go ahead and do. So this will just be, you know, 0.75 plus 30 second. Oops, I gotta put in inches. It's getting confused on units. Okay, and then if I measure from here to here, now it's three quarters. So, okay, and then we just need to repeat this uh, on this guy down here. However, there's one more thing we need to do. So the way that I like to do these parts here, this overall length is like one point. 35-ish. It's a very weird dimension because it's a combination between metric and uh, um, English or standard. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to create a sketch on this plane. We basically need to fill in this hex and put a hole here for a screw. So, um, uh, oops, uh, use, and then I'm going to put a hole here, 0.196. And uh, I'll explain um, I'll explain what this does uh, a little bit later. Um, but basically, we we don't run a hex shaft all the way through, and we use this to fasten the hex shaft in place. And that, that how that works, I'll, I'll explain a little later. So, and then we just need to, to add to flip the direction of this and add some thickness to this. Usually, quarter inch is probably good. And then if I do add and make sure the merge scope is correct. Okay, so then we just end up with this bolt hole on this side, and we end up with this like hex socket on the back side. So, okay, so that is good. All right, so then we need to just essentially duplicate what we've done with this flange and with this, this extrusion here down here. However, on this side, it's a little bit different because we're using a needle bearing instead of a hex shaft, and so we need to make sure that a needle bearing can be installed here. So... Um, what we're going to do to start is let's um, let's pick out what our, what our needle bearing actually is. So if we look at the top here, I just want to get, I want to get the minimum distance between two troughs that are opposite to tell me what the minimum spacing um, between, like, between the bottom of this tooth and the bottom of this tooth is. So if I go here and I go to minimum distance, it's just, just over one inch. So, okay, so that's probably not going to work with the tube size that we were going to use. So um, let's go here and let's go to needle bearings. Let's look at what options we've got. So if I remember correctly, the, the three quarter inch bearing OD uh, is one inch. Yeah, that's correct. So, so all the three quarter inch um, needle bearings are they have a one inch OD. So, if we were to put a one inch hole in this, you know, that would that would basically leave no material at the bottom of the teeth, and this pulley would just not work. Um, so, we need to go for a smaller shaft size. Now, obviously, what we could do um, is we could create we could like extrude this out a whole bunch and put the needle bearing so the needle bearing doesn't uh, any doesn't protrude underneath the teeth like the needle, needle bearing is kind of off to the side um, and if I remember correctly that's what we did last year on our intake um, 
for the 2022 uh, season, uh, we we just had the needle bearing offset to one side, and we still use that three quarter inch um, ID one inch OD needle bearing. However, uh, for this design, I don't really want to do that, so we're going to go to a smaller size. Um, so for here, I think we're going to look at the five eighths ones. It gives us thirteen sixteenths. So that would give us uh, three thirty seconds of material under the tooth. That's probably sufficient. Um, that should be okay. That's 0 0.09375, so it's you know it's a pretty decent amount. So um, what we're gonna do here is we're going to go ahead and create a sketch on this face, and then essentially what I just want to do is I just want to extend this out because obviously this pulley here needs to be flush with this pulley here. However, I don't want this much of a gap to be here. Um, but we don't need a bearing boss like this pulley has, um, just because there's no inner race or outer race on the, the bearing to worry about. Um, there's just this this polycarb kind of plate here. So all I'm just going to do is just going to um, just uh, project this. Oops, select the circle and then just extrude this whole face out. I'm going to go to add. We'll just go for that guy and then it's going to be we're going to do the same thing up to face and then offset distance and i think we're going to do a 30 second you really don't need a ton of slop here just to keep this just to keep this moving freely um so this creates kind of a weird looking pulley but this you know this material here is not really uh uh hurting anything right because you have to have this spacing anyways because this pulley up here is driving where this is left to right um, okay, so let's look at what our overall thickness is here. That is 605. So I think we can just do like a half inch wide needle bearing. Yeah, they also have 7 sixteenths, but that's kind of a not, you can see the price goes up for that smaller bearing. So it's actually, it's actually a non-standard size. So it looks like the half inch wide one here is the cheapest, which means it's the most standard size and it, and it works in our application anyways. So um, what we're gonna do then is um, I just want to make sure that this to there is yeah okay so um, let's go ahead let's go ahead and create this guy and do our little flange extension thing that we have to do we'll, we'll, we'll do all that and then we'll we'll create the bore here through the middle I think that'll be an easier workflow so um, let's go ahead and create a sketch here and like we said we know the tube id is 1.125 one and an eighth then we're going to extrude this out and we know we're going to add that 30 second back in so i'm still going to do 0.75 inches plus 0.3125 or 03125 inches I'm just going to go ahead and add that 30 second in and then i need to go through in the process and create this plane again so show the center to center sketch plane plane points select the center point select the front plane then hide this plane, hide the sketch, select the plane, edit the sketch. Okay, a lot of a lot of steps here. So then uh, we want to go intersection, select, 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 and select, and then go back to use and escape out of that. All right, and then we're just going to duplicate the same thing we did before. So line like this, and then this and this want to be uh, coincident to each other. This should be a sixteenth of an inch, and this should be a thirty-second of an inch. And then we can revolve this, and the axis should be that. Is that working properly? Yep, looks like it. And merge scope is correct. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and do our chamfer here. All right, looks good. So then um, now what we need to do, I'm gonna go ahead and, and hide this. It's in our way. And then I think what we're gonna just do is just do a... Oh, I didn't select it, there we go. Okay, so I'll create a sketch on this, the end of this pulley here. Just hover over that and get access to that. And then it's gonna be uh, 13 16 I don't actually have that one. Oh, 8125, okay. I should have known that one, but I didn't, okay. And then we're going to cut this one half inch deep. Merge scope should be correct. Yep. 
And then I'm just going to go ahead and create a sketch in the base here. And then this circle here, so this this holds the needle bearing, right? And the needle bearing obviously is bigger than the the shaft that it's riding on. But then obviously we this you know the rest of the pulley doesn't have a hole in it, so we need to add a hole there just to clear the shaft, right? Just to clear the tube. And so the tube is five eighths of an inch, but we need a little extra room, so we'll go. Um, we could go 0.75, although I don't like how little material that leaves. So if we did point, uh, we did 0.625, maybe, maybe we add, it can be relatively close. So maybe we do 0.65 maybe. That feels a little close still. We'll do like 0.675. Yeah, so that should be 25 thou on either side. So 50 thou on the diameter. Um, so 25 thou clearance between the inside of this 3D printed part and the roller and the dead axle that feels better to me but it still leaves a, a pretty good shoulder here that the bearing can bottom out on when we install it okay i'm gonna remove and we're just gonna do through all okay and then we don't need we don't need any any this type of feature any or anything on this side because the uh uh the dead axle goes all the way through rather than ending at the end cap like i said i'll explain more about what this arrangement looks like as we get a little bit farther along okay let's show these parts again um and then oh yeah we need to we need to actually we need to actually define the size i thought yeah we defined it here so this should be 0.625 that's 5 eighths and then this should update yep it did okay um, and, I, and I know for a fact that 5 eighths tube and a 16th wall is available. We used it on our, our shooting mechanism um, on the robot in 2022. Um, so I know it's available, but if you weren't sure what size they're available of aluminum tube, you could just go on McMaster and browse and see what's available. Um, okay, so that is our uh, custom pulleys designed. And... Um, uh, should be all good to go there. So um, we're going to go ahead and end this part here, and then um, uh, we will um, pick this up uh, working on the assembly in the next part. So I will see you guys in the next video.